Hey, welcome back to the second part for paper two, which is from May, June 2023, and this is the Zone 2 2022 paper. Paper is an hour and 45 minutes, and this paper, I, th I do think you need it. Realistically, it took an hour for part one, but now we're going to move on to part two. But remember, part two is only worth 15 marks. It's only 20% of the final mark. What I want to do with this video is try and show you how to pick up some easy marks with this, and then we'll move on to some more advanced techniques. Okay, so here we go. Um, we have the problem, a two-dimensional 2D array called account, contains account holders, names, and passwords for a banking program. And then another 2D array, account details, has three columns containing the following details. So I'm gonna break this down a little bit. So I've got the, the first part, the two arrays, okay? Column one stores the balance, the amount of money in the account, for example, 250. Column two stores the overdraft limit, the maximum total amount in the account holders can borrow from the bank after the account balance reaches zero, for example, 100. Column three stores the withdrawal debt limit, the amount of money that can be withdrawn at one time, for example, 200. Okay, so that's that's what we've got with two arrays doing that. These are linking to each other. Um, obviously, the the money in, in the account details must be linked somehow to the account holder. And I'll go through that in a little in, in a few moments. The amount of money in a bank account can be negative, can be overdrawn, but not by more than the overdraft limit. Okay, for example, an account with an overdraft limit of 100 must have a balance that is greater than or equal to minus 100. Suitable error messages must be displayed if the withdrawal cannot take place. Okay, and the bank account ID gives the index of each account holder, this is what I was talking about now, the account holder's data held in the two arrays. So it's a bit like a, rel a relational database, something that we don't learn anymore in, the, in this current syllabus. So let's have a little look. So account array should look something like this. The account holder, the names and the passwords of the, um, the account holder. Okay, this is just random data I've put in. And then the other one is three columns. We've got the balance, we've got the overdraft limit and we've got the withdrawal limit, okay? So that's this first part. This is trying to sort of explain this in um, sort of a, in visually. The next part, um, the error messages. Okay, so little error, error messages must be displayed. I've just got a couple here. Withdrawal of $300, let's change it to dollars, for account ID zero for the first person exceeds the withdrawal limit and withdrawal of 400 pounds from account one exceeds the overdraft limit. So we've got a withdrawal limit there, error, and we've got an overdraft limit as well. They're the two error messages you might find from this based on these limitations you've got here. Okay, now just to make it a little bit clearer, based on this bottom bit, so account holder number 20, this is his details in column one and column two. So basically the account holder ID zero is John Doe, uh, that's, his in, that's the first column, and password is the second value in the account. So person 20, this is position one, um, holder name, account holder, and position two, password. And then in the, in the second one, act details, okay? Same person, look, we've got the same ID, although the, the account doesn't include account ID. Uh, realistically, it should, in my opinion. You've got the balance, okay? So 20, number one is the balance, number two is the overdraft limit, and number three is the withdrawal limit. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So what have we got to do? What is the, what, now we've got the problem, what do we need to do? We need to write a program that meets the following requirements. It checks the account ID, checks that it exists, and the name and the password entered by the account holder match the name and password stored in account, okay? Before any action can take place. Basically it's saying, is this user, are they a member of our, our bank? If they are, is the password right for that particular user? displays a, me a menu showing the four actions available for the account holders to choose from. So this is nice and easy. Allow an action to be chosen and completed. Each action is completed by a procedure with a parameter of the account ID. Mm, okay, we'll come to that bit. You must use pseudocode or program code and add comments to explain your code's working. All inputs and outputs must contain suitable messages. Okay, you get marks for this. You only need to declare any local arrays and local variables that you use. 
Okay, you do not need to declare and initialize the data in the global arrays, account, and account details, and the variable size. Okay, because they've already been set up. Just to go through the marking, it's broken down into two parts. We've got a maximum of nine marks for the first part and six marks for the second part. So what we're looking for is the range of programming techniques used is appropriate to the problem. All criteria stated for the scenario have been covered by the use of appropriate programming techniques. Check the list of techniques needed. Basically, all the programming techniques from the book, looping a while loop or a for loop would be useful. Defining a function or a procedure would be fantastic. And using what I've said before, using if statements, elif, else, to, to make for, for decisions. The data structures chosen are appropriate and store all the data required. Now, I don't quite know how this works because it says you don't need to declare the data, but if you are linking back to those arrays, you will pick up the marks. Okay, now for six marks, the program is fully commented. It could be a load of rubbish you've written, but if it's fully commented, great. Okay, you've had lots of comments. You've explained what you're doing or what you think you're doing. Suitable identifiers with meaningful names. So all the variables that you're gonna use, um, functions, procedures, um, the arrays have already got names, but anything like that, you've given them proper names, you're gonna pick up marks. The program is in a logical order. Like this is, and for this program, I'm gonna write things in procedures. As, as functions and then call them at the end. So put it in little blocks of code to try and answer each of the bullet points. The solution is accurate and the solution meets all of the requirements given in the question. I mean, you might not pick all the marks up, but you'll certainly pick up some marks if you sort of stick to the plan here. This is tackling the first part of the problem. And I'm using this thing, something called null here, which um, I'm gonna go through in a moment. So write a program that meets the following requirements checks the account ID exists, and the name and the password entered by the account holder match the name and the password stored in account before any action can take place. So what I'm gonna do, I've, I've written a function here, okay? <laughs> a little bit like SQL, I suppose, this is how you would do this. Function check credentials, that's what I'm gonna call it. My function is called check, this is pseudocode. Function check credentials. Check in the account ID, the name and the password. Okay, so what, what do I want this program to do? This is where I've done comments. It checks, if, it checks if the account ID exists and if the entered name and password match the stored ones. Um, I'm using null, and this is a constant used to indicate that the expected value is unknown. So we've got an, a nested if. We've got an if, and we're gonna return false, and we've got an if within that to return true. Okay, so basically position one, if the name and the password, yeah, Position one, name, position two, password. If the name and the password are not what we're expecting, return false. If the account ID name equals name and the account ID password equals password, then return true. That's it. That would get you the marks for that, okay? Those lines. So basically, a nested if statement. As you can see, please put comments in. Okay, the next bullet point, let's have a look. Okay, for the next bullet point, I've got display a menu showing the four actions available for the account holder to choose from. Okay, they're gonna either display the display balance, withdraw money, deposit money, and then of course, finally exit. Um, so we, I'm gonna write three procedures. So I'm gonna start with the first one, display balance, because this is probably the easiest one. I'll link it through to the account details. Okay, because this is where these three things are stored. I've got the balance in the first account details one, account details two, and account details three. So as you can see here in the account ID, yeah, we've got account ID, account, um, account details. The account ID is um, at first position 250 there for, the, for this first one, yeah, 500, 1000. So this column here refers to this one. Okay, so balance equals account details, um, account ID one. Okay, display current balance, yeah, and then plus whatever's in that balance there. Okay, so that's what's going to happen there. So we've written a procedure, display the balance, um, um, account ID, and it's going to be taking the information from balance in account details. Okay, and it's going to be referring to column one, which is balance. Another procedure, again, but this time for withdrawing money, I want to be looking at this, but there's some rules here in terms of how much money I can withdraw. It's a bit bigger, this one. Again, procedure, um, withdraw money. And again, account ID and the amount. Okay, so balance, yeah, 
and we're going to be looking at the overdraft limit, the withdrawal limit, and all of these three things. We're going to retrieve this information. So if the amount yeah, that we're going to be withdrawing, if the, if the amount is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to display a message invalid withdrawal amount. We can't withdraw zero money. Else, if the amount is greater than the withdrawal limit, display, this is where we were talking about error messages before, withdrawal amount exceeds the withdrawal limit. Else if, yeah, the balance um, minus amount is less than the overdraft limit. Again, we've got an exceed the overdraft limit here. If everything's okay, then else balance equals balance minus amount. Account details, yeah, account ID one equals balance. And then withdrawal successful, the new balance is, and we add the balance, okay? So that would be the first one but we've got to use these if and these else statements to say, hang on, what's the overdraft limit? Uh, what's the withdrawal amount that's been allowed? And the, for, for the um, third one, depositing money, okay? What I've got to do, I'm going to retrieve um, the balance, okay, from the account details, yeah? I'm going to check if the deposit amount is valid, i.e. it's greater than, it's not less than, uh, less than zero, otherwise it's going to display an invalid deposit amount. Else, and if, if we're all okay, we're going to update the balance with the deposit amount. So balance equals balance plus the amount, yeah, plus the amount that the person has put in. So account details, account detail one equals balance, display, deposit successful, and it's going to display the new balance, whatever was put in balance, this here, balance plus, plus amount. Okay, so it's going to display the new balance. So we don't need to do a procedure for exit, because that's just going to be an option four in our menu. So speaking of menus, I've created a little function here called menu and yeah, display the menu options and prompt the user for the choice. So I'm going to display one, display balance, da -da -da, withdraw money, deposit money and exit. The person then I'm going to get an input because they're going to enter the choice and then we're going to return that choice. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, so this is basically my main program based on those procedures and based on that menu system. So once the program lo loads, it's going to display a welcome message, welcome to the banking program. And then it's going to prompt the user for their ID, for their name, and for their password. Okay, get input, get input, get input. If the credentials, if the account ID, the name and password are all okay, then the authentication is successful, and then we can move on to the menu, the thing I've just shown you. So go to here, while the choice is not for, i.e. four is the exit, okay, to exit the program, while the choice is not for, if the choice is one, okay, display the balance, if the choice is two, um, enter what you want to withdraw, choice three, enter what you want to deposit, okay, linking it in here like so, and then else display invalid choice. Please try again. If somebody puts in five or, or a letter or anything, then it's an invalid choice. So then, of course, display the menu again and prompt the next choice, choice equals menu. So it's going to loop around, yeah. If all is wrong, display invalid credentials, access denied. If the person puts in the wrong details, then put in invalid credentials, okay? And that's it. That's how I would write this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all this below. I'm using a piece of software. I'm using pseudocodeeditor.com to write my um, pseudocode. Obviously, you've not got this luxury when you're in the exam. I'll copy this code and put it into the description below. I've also written this in Python with some sort of false data in it, five users, so you can see how it would work in Python, and I will copy that into the description below as well. But that's it. That's how I would answer the 15 mark question on this paper. Okay, good luck. Good luck with your exams, and I will speak to you very, very soon. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.